Good morning, everyone. I'm Oliver Joyce, the creator of Swords and Sandals, and of course, owner of Whiskey Barrel Studios. Every now and again, I do a developer diary or a, a let's talk video about games in general, or the games industry, or more often my own stuff. And I haven't one done. I haven't done one of these in quite a while. So today, I thought I'd take you through the process of creating the music for Swords and Sandals. The music in Sword and Sandals is one of the most sort of iconic parts of the franchise. It's very much recognized as um, as much as or probably more so than even the little uh, cartoon gladiators and so on. It's the first thing that hits you when you start the game, the little Swords and Sandals Gladiator, which of course was me singing the voices uh, all those years ago in 2005. I think when I originally recorded it. And I've done a number of variations on the Swords and Sandals theme over the years. And with each new game that comes out, I try to uh, compose a new uh, variation on it to keep things fresh, although I often use the classic themes in new games. So today I'm just basically going to go through on the keyboard and play a couple of different riffs and show you how a song is built up. I've got two examples for you today. The first one is going to be from Swords and Sandals Medieval, uh, which was the knight-based one that came out a couple of years ago. And the second will be from Swords and Sandals Pirates, which uh, you haven't heard this theme yet, but this hopefully will become as iconic as the other ones. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how I recorded them and built them up, and then we'll listen to the finished product. All right, so I'm going to move over to the keyboard now, and um, we'll get started. All right, so last year sometime, I think, I put together a bit of a backing track for that original Swords and Sandals. I was sort of experimenting with a more kind of 80s driving pop feel. Uh, so this backing track you're gonna hear is gonna sound quite cheesy, but uh, when I do these backing tracks, I find that they're a great way of just capturing you know, the vibe of the song, and I can kind of riff over the top, do some ad lib sort of like over the top while it's playing. So I'm gonna put those two together and we'll see how it sounds. All right, here we go. I told you it was gonna be cheesy. It has an 80s vibe to it, but what you can hear in the background is actually quite an interesting chord progression. That's the... All in a minor key, but it's building up to something. Taking the uh, listener on a journey you'll hear as I move up to the minor, the major key right now. That's the Swords of Sandals riff, and that's the famous one, and it sounds so good over a, minor, a major key. I'll often take it back to a minor key just to change things up and see if I can get a different feel for the song. This is a more sci-fi sounding instrument here. But anyway, what you start to hear is this repeat of And that became the um, classic Gladiator song. So, Gladiator, 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 Gladiator. cheesy ending of course well that video took about four or five attempts to record because I kept stuffing up the notes um, as I said I haven't played piano properly in a long time and so you're gonna pick up a lot of little um, flaws and mistakes along the way but a song like that eventually gets um, recorded and recorded and uh, multi-tracked and then eventually I do some proper vocals over the top use these sort of 8 to 16 um, uh, overdubs and choruses and of me singing sort of gladiator, gladiator, uh, and then I mix it all together, and then 
that usually becomes the final recording, at least for the old ones. And so you end up getting something. This is like from Soldiers and Sandals 3. You can hear this. Uh... Yeah, so that's how I used to do it. But these days, I now put my trust in the hands of professionals. And I'm next going to show you how I um, would record an instrumental. And then we're going to show you the final product uh, after a composer has um, gotten their hands on it and really done a nice job of polishing it up. So the track I'm going to show you next is Swords and Sandals Medieval. And that never actually had a vocal component to it because I never ended up uh, writing one. But the, um, the melody itself is quite iconic. Very simple, but that formed the basis of the entire song. So I'm going to go through now and add tr um, tracks as we go. So you can hear the beginning. A couple of pianos. Then we're going to add in some cellos. Adding layers and richness as we go. Soon we're going to add some drums and a bass. More and more rich and full as it goes on. Often I will um, change up the key just to, um, to mix things up if I find that uh, it sounds too sort of familiar. So let's hear that whole song again, but um, transposed up two steps. So still a simple riff. microphone um, what I'm going to show you now is the final product which was done by a friend of mine a great composer from Brazil called Adrian Galassi now I handed that track over to him um, mixed and separately so I could get some of the individual um, melodies out of it and then you know a week later or so it sometimes even less uh, he would come back to me with um, the final product and we'd go through it and then we'd um, change it a little um, based on you know what we're thinking and the end result sounds like this and it's really cool how cool is that there's the iconic theme And he's added some kind of electro music into it. And it's really about to explode now. Yeah, so that's that's about enough from that one. But how cool is that? And so that ends up being the final product of the song. And we did that a few times. And he um, made nicer versions of a number of my tracks um, uh, that really just you know, brought out the true magic of the, of the game in the song. So finally, I'm going to show you uh, Sword and Sandals Pirates. Uh, and that's a work in pro... No, it's actually, no, the game is a work in progress, but the music is finished. So for Sword and Sandals Pirates, I wanted uh, quite a uplifting sea shanty sort of sound. I wanted it to have, you know, major chords and, and a sort of positive vibe because most of the games that I make are quite uplifting and fun and lighthearted and I kind of want the music to reflect that. I've always been a fan of the sort of 
um, major chord style music of the Super Mario Brothers and things like that. In this theme, the same chord progression kept coming back in my mind, which was... And so you'll hear that throughout the song. This time done with some strings. And then we're going to add in a cello. Just a very low. Now the backbone of the song is actually a mandolin coming in here. And that plays a sort of driving sound throughout the, uh, the duration of the song. And it starts to add layers slowly. I want this feeling that, you know, you're off to sea and the sun is bright, the day is new, and the sea spray is in your hair. And here, with a, a, a tin whistle, essentially, is the main uh, repeated theme of the game, this. I actually can't remember how to play it. How's it go? No, I still can't remember it, so I don't really want to ruin it by playing over the top. Slowly and slowly, it sort of layers and builds up and builds up. There's about um, 15 instruments in this. And yeah, adds a French horn for some kind of like, you know, medieval pageantry. Anyway, we'll get to the end of this verse and we'll stop and I'll play you the finished version. Yeah, all right, so that's enough of that. All right, so that was my home demo recording of the Sword and Sandals Pirates theme song. And, you know, it sounds a little rough and the mixing's not great, but often that's enough for a composer to get the general idea of what I want from the song, you know, the harmonies and counter harmonies and melodies and so on, and, and the stuff gets repeated. My music is generally quite simple. Um, but I try to make it catchy. So this song I um, recorded up and then I sent it over to uh, Adrian Galassi over in uh, Brazil. And within a week or two, he had worked a lot of magic on it. And let's listen to a little of the um, finished product and see how similar, but how much better it sounds in his hands. <laughs> He's added some guitars, some lovely acoustic guitars in there. And that main theme that repeats throughout the game, the do 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 Yeah, there he's added a lovely count harmony over the top that's playing and complements the main theme. Then the bass kicks in. So this theme is used in multiple parts of the game, you know, on the title screen, um, often on the overworld while you're sailing, just to kind of create this vibe of, like, adventure. And I think he just nailed it. Anyway, that keeps going and going, so I'll um I'll turn it down and play it a little bit in the background. Yeah, so that's a little bit about the process of how I write and record songs for Swords and Sandals. I've been doing it for many years, and um, yeah, as I said earlier, I eventually turned the process over to professional composers. But um, in general, I think music is so important to a game and I like to have original tracks because I feel like if you can have music that you know reflects the soul of your game, people will remember it. People still remember the original Mario Brothers theme and the Zelda theme and I want people to remember the Swords and Sandals themes um, as much as the rest of the game. I still hear people um, commenting on YouTube videos with you know, swords and sandals, gladiator! That's the funny thing, because I did that as a bit of a throwaway, but I never realized how iconic it would become. Um, 
There's quite a lot of tracks in Sword and Sandals Pirates, and I'm looking forward to you experience them in the game. There are different tracks for when you reach islands, uh, when you're in battle, when you're at sea, when it's nighttime, that kind of thing. And um, it really does make the game. So that's the end of uh, my little Let's Talk video for the day. I'm going to do a few more of these in the future because I've been a bit slack with them. There's been a lot more Ollie Plays videos than uh, developer talk videos because the dev talk videos often can uh, take a bit more effort. Um, got a bit of a surprise for you in coming weeks. There's another Secret Sword and Sandals project coming up, which I've been just um, reworking on. And um, I'll be announcing that really soon. And of course, Sword and Sandals Pirates is due uh, towards the end of the year. I'm really hoping October, November for launch, if I can get things um, right. And that's going to come out, of course, on PC and on um, Android and iOS. Unfortunately, not on consoles because it's uh, not made using um, any software that I can use to run it on consoles. But the next Sword and Sandals after that, or when I eventually make Sword and Sandals 6, I really want to bring that out on PlayStation and Switch and maybe even Xbox One. Who knows? All right, that's it for today. Um, cheers. Thanks for listening, and uh, bye for now.